Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backless Pursuit, and today we're going to take a look at the Zeiss SFL binoculars. These are the 10x40. These here are the 10x30. They also come in an 8x40 and an 8x30 currently, so some options. But they are incredibly lightweight, incredibly compact, particularly given the optical performance that you get out of these binoculars. We're going to go over what makes them unique, what some of the features are and the specs of these binoculars, and also how they perform next to the competition in real world conditions. We were able to put these on tripods next to each other in some fog, some low light, rainy conditions, and really see how they performed in those real world conditions. Gonna bring that to you. Really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button for us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, check out our website backwithpursuit.com. Tons of gear reviews over there. I'll put links to that down in the description as well as a link to the SFL binoculars and the links to the other ones here that we're gonna talk about here today. Let's get started. All right, let's get started with some of the specs and features of the Zeiss SF binoculars. They have a magnesium body, so they're lightweight, but they didn't skimp on any of the materials there. They're gonna be super durable for you, rubber, rubber armor, and they've got the smart focus here as well, like the SF binoculars, the Victory SF binoculars. They are super silky smooth, just like all the other Zeiss focus mechanisms. They're some of my favorite out on the market, the way that they are, just have the right amount of tension, um, and they're just the right speed as well. You have 1.4 revolutions of the focus wheel from 10 feet to infinity. So that enables you to quickly bring something into focus, but it's not so fast that it makes a, an issue out of longer range focus. We had these on a tripod over 3000 yards away. We were able to bring objects into focus very, very easily. So they're excellent that way. You can see you've got a, a binocular tripod adapter or it's threaded for that here. You've got the Zeiss uh, adapter right here. It easily fits right on there. Just if you are someone who likes to use these or any binoculars on a tripod, these are gonna fit that bill, which I am, so I really appreciate that. Their, their eye cups are excellent. You've got 18 millimeters of eye relief, and you've got a four position, uh, four click stops here on the eye cups, and they're very defined. They're not loose. There's no play whatsoever. So Zeiss did a great job with these eye cups. Some of the other Zeiss eye cups I haven't loved, but these ones I'm a really huge fan of. Uh, the diopter here under the right barrel is non-locking, but it is stiff enough to where it's not gonna move on you. That was one of the issues with the Conquest that I had that I didn't love because that was quite, uh, quite loose, but this one is a lot more stiff. So even though it's not locking, which is my preferred method as uh, being a hunter, I like to have a locking diopter, but it, they, because they don't have that, uh, they do have at least a, a mechanism here that is stiff enough that it doesn't move unless you move it. So that is much appreciated as well. Now the SFL binocular is going to fall between the Victory lineup and the Conquest lineup within the Zeiss binoculars. I really appreciate that Zeiss came out with that binocular between those two because there's a pretty big price gap between the Conquest and the Victory. These fit that bill perfectly and they're, they've maintained that super lightweight functionality. There's just not much in this category. There's not really anything in this category that is as light as these and performs optically like these do. We'll get into that more here in a minute, but more specs here. You got 4.7 inches tall is all with these. They're so small and only 16.2 ounces. Absolutely incredible. Nothing else in it like it's uh, in this optical performance category that is even close to that size and weight. The 10 by 40s here come in at 5.7 inches tall and 22.6 ounces. Again, best in class that I'm aware of in their optical performance and their size and weight. So awesome there. As a quick comparison, you can see these are the Swarovski NL Pure 10 by 32s. They're basically the exact same size as the, the Zeiss SFL 10 by 40s. So you have larger objective here, some more light gathering. And I found that the SFLs did a a better, had better performance in low light than the NL peers being in the 32s. You would expect that because 32 versus a 40 millimeter low light performance is going to be better in a 40 millimeter. But what's incredible is they're almost identical in size and weight. They're both 22.6, 22.5 ounces. So basically the exact same uh, size and weight, but this is a 40 millimeter binocular. So that's pretty incredible that Zeiss was able to put that together. One of the ways they did that 
Of course, the magnesium body like we talked about, but their lenses in these binoculars are a little bit thinner. The glass is a little bit thinner. And so that shaves some of that weight out for these binoculars. So they did an excellent, excellent job uh, as far as the way that they built these. They feel like a phenomenal binocular. Their the focus mechanism gives up absolutely nothing. Eye cups are of excellent quality. That diopter is excellent. Um, just an incredibly built binocular. Now, one of the things that really sets these SFL binoculars apart, outside of the obvious lightweight and compact size, is how forgiving their eye box is. If you've used binoculars that do not have a forgiving eye box, you know what I mean. Uh, you pull your binoculars up and there's black spots and just you have to hold them in just the right spot to get your full field of view. The SFL binoculars are not like that. They're extremely forgiving. They give you that wow factor when you pull them up. You just have the full field of view. You don't have to have them positioned perfectly to get that field of view. It's not like every time you're moving, you're getting black spots in the field of view. So they do a phen phenomenal job there. A really good example of that is the uh, Swarovski NL Peers. I love these binoculars. Probably the best optical performance of anything that I've ever tested. However, the eye box is not very forgiving. So you find yourself having to make small adjustments so you don't get those little black spots or whatnot. They just aren't as forgiving as these SFL binoculars. So they did a phenomenal job making these extremely forgiving so that they're just a joy to use. You put your eyes in the, in the eye cups here and it just, it's like your face just melts into the binocular, which is what you want. So absolutely incredible there. Now, optically, you've got ED glass and ultra high definition lenses, as well as the Zeiss T-Star coating to provide extra color rendition and color contrast, great low light performance. And Zeiss also has a field flattener in these binoculars, so you have a nice flat field of view. If you've ever used binoculars that don't have that, you kind of see those rounded edges on the, on the sides, and uh, they're much less desirable to use than something with a field flattener. So it's very nice that Zeiss did that, and they just perform phenomenally. Now in the optical performance comparison, we didn't notice any difference in resolution here between the 40 millimeter and the 30 millimeter. They both were amazing in edge to edge clarity, amazing in the image resolution. Now, obviously, as you can imagine, the 40 millimeters did better in low light than the 30s. The 30s dropped off just a little bit before the 40s when we were out there testing in low light. Not to take anything away from what the 30s did, they were absolutely incredible. They competed right there with the NL peers, the 32s, which was a huge surprise to me. I couldn't believe that they were right there with them. Of course, field of view is smaller on the, uh, the SFLs here, but low light performance was right there, which I was super impressed with, but still not as good as the 40 millimeter. That bigger objective is gonna gather more light for you. So these were certainly brighter later into the night than the, the 30 millimeters. Either way, both of them performed well past uh, sunset, well past half hour sunset, and you could still pick out images on the side of a hill. We were looking at some deer that were over a thousand yards away, and we were still able to pick some of those up way into the evening. So very, very impressed with that as far as optical performance. So how did they compare to the competition? As I mentioned, we did a huge binocular review. I had 26 binoculars side by side on tripod, so we were able to compare a bunch of these uh, next to each other. Of course, the SFL was not out when we did that review, so we couldn't compare those side by side. But what we did, so we grabbed some of the top performers in the 10 by 40 category here, uh, in the 10 by 42, and one of those was the Vortex Razor UHD, and another in the, the the uh, step down in the category was the GPO Passion HD. Those were some of the top performers as well. The Zeiss Conquest was, was the top performer in this $1,000 uh, category. And the Vortex Razor UHD, not the HD, but the UHD, were the overall optical performance winners in that next category up that the SFLs were in. So how'd they compare? Uh, well, as you can see, size-wise, there's no comparison. Now these, these SFLs are so much smaller, so much lighter than the Razor UHDs. You've got 32 ounces with the Razor UHDs and 22.6 ounces on the SFLs. So you save 10 ounces with these guys. Obviously so much more compact, um, smaller in size all the way around. Where the Razors, when we had these side by side here recently uh, out on our testing, the Razor UHDs did perform better in low light and now we're talking 
you know, well past sunset, well past half hour after sunset. So if you're in a hunting situation, we're talking after legal shooting hours. Uh, the, the Razer UHDs did a little bit better. They were a little bit brighter. Those extra lenses that Vortex puts in here that gives you all that extra weight did help in that low light performance. So they did uh, perform a little bit better than the SFLs, but these were still absolutely phenomenal. So um, up to you on as far as how what's most important to you, weight and size, or that extra uh, performance that you get out of the UHDs versus the size and weight savings and still a phenomenal performance here. But, but that was how they compared. Now next to the, uh, the, uh, the NL Pures here, of course the NL Pures outperformed them. You would expect that being that these are in next class up. These were the overall number one spot in our big binocular review. So I didn't expect the, the SFLs to, to really take, uh, take that away from the NL Pures. But what I was so impressed with was how close they were to that NL Pure, uh, in everything particularly except for low light. Now, of course, field of view is much, much bigger, 399 versus 345. But uh, you have a much heavier binocular, the 8 ounces heavier in the NL Pure at 30 ounces versus the 22 here. So uh, there's a give and take there, but I was absolutely... Uh, really, really impressed with these Zeiss SFL binoculars. Now over on the 10 by 30 side, the more compact size here, of course, they're just so small and compact. Next to the Swaro NL Pures, again, there's just no contest in the size and weight that you've got. As I mentioned earlier, the third NL Pure 32s are the same size and weight as the 40 millimeter in the SFL. And uh, compared to the NL or to the SFL 30s here, so much smaller, so much more compact. You've got 22 ounces versus the 16 of the the SFL here. So you're going to save in size and weight, um, but performance-wise, I was just so incredibly impressed with these SFL, even when putting them next to the NL Pures. Of course, NL Pures have a much better field of view than the the SFLs, uh, and they have better edge-to-edge -edge clarity by a little bit but the gap wasn't nearly as big as I thought it was gonna be between these two. Kind of the same story between the SFLs and the NL Pures in the 40 millimeter size. Um, and I actually personally felt like the, the SFLs did a little bit better in low light. And I was shocked, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but I was shocked to say that because they were just so incredibly detailed late into the night. And they were, at worst case, they were equivalent to in low light performance to the NL Pures. So, um, I was just really, really impressed with that. Now next to, this is the GPO Range Guide 2800. Of course, these are range finding binoculars, so it's not really a fair comparison, but they're a 32 millimeter also. And as you can see, they're also smaller uh, and more compact than those as well. And of course, they're gonna be lighter weight because you still have a, a, a range finder built into this, but, um, but still super compact and really, really uh, amazing performance out of such a small and compact binocular. So those are the Zeiss SFL binoculars. I'll put links to these down in the description for you so you can check them out for yourself. Absolutely incredible performers, best in class in so many areas. But drop any questions or comments you might have for us down in the comment section. We'd love to help you out, answer any questions we can for you. Thanks for watching here today and we will see you next time.